Knowing your allies in FC2 programming is essential to sustainability and success. In this episode, we explore how to initiate and maintain these relationships. We hear about what these relationships look like across the globe and how values play an integral part of partner support and building trust around the use of FC2. Simone Martins is the business development manager for Latin America for the female health company. Simone speaks about forging relationships with healthcare providers and creating an environment of confidence around the FC2. Healthcare providers are key for the acceptance of any contraceptive or prevention method. That's why the healthcare provider must be informed about FC2 female condom and during counseling be confident about offering the method to the client. Of course, it is important to have FC2 female condom available in a country, but if you don't train healthcare providers to offer the method to the, to the women and men that go to the health centers, it won't work because they are the ones that can influence the decision of women and men to accept trying the method. So if we keep training healthcare providers, the, the chance that we are going to succeed that the female condom will be acceptable and the use will, will increase a lot. Brazilian uh, Minister of Health just bought 50 million female, FC2 female condoms. And it's important that the government ha keep in mind that they need to train the healthcare providers so that they can offer the method to women and men that go to the health centers. This way, they are going to try the method to be confident about the method and keep using FC2 female condom. In the end, condoms mean love. If someone uh, wants you to use a condom, it means that this person loves you, that this person cares about you. So if, if you work together in a relationship, if you think about your future together, you need to be protected. So using a condom is an act of love. Judy Palmo is the Senior Education and Partnership Manager for the Female Health Company. Judy speaks about her work with providers in the United States and helps us understand the four steps for setting up providers for success using values-based communication skills. So in my position, I get to work with providers from the van driver for the needle exchange program to the nurse practitioner, social worker, community health educator, um, medical doctor, all the people that are important to putting FC2 into the hands of men and women who want it and need it. When I first started uh, five years ago with the Female Health Company, we talked a lot about provider bias and how the most important piece and in getting FC2 in the community was what providers have to say and what providers believe about the FC2 female condom. And we use the word bias. And for a while, I also adopted that word. But after working with providers around the US, I realized it's less of a bias and more of a lack of knowledge. So for the last five years, I can think of one case where a provider was not able to turn his or her ideas around about FC2. In five years, one provider, every other provider that I trained or spoke with or had an interaction with, and gave them an opportunity to build their own capacity, their own knowledge about FC2. Before I knew it, they were talking with their clients, with their patients, with their customers about FC2 female condom. What a great option it is. An option on the buffet. Another option to, pr to protect themselves from sexually transmitted infections, including HIV and unplanned pregnancy. So I'm, I'm happy that I checked my own bias and got rid of the word bias and now I think of it more as providers that just need more education. So women are very different, not to mention we know women are very smart and very creative. And if we can let every woman know all the advantages of FC2, she's gonna fill up the toolbox and use whatever tools she needs to with any given partner. 
A huge part of what we do at the Female Health Company is to set providers up for success in how they talk with their clients about the FC2 female condom so that they're setting the client or the customer up for success in using the FC2 female condom. So the first step in that process for providers is education, knowing about the FC2 female condom. What is it? What are the benefits? Why is it a great choice for our community or for that individual client who's sitting in front of him or her? And by going through our training online or in person, the provider is absolutely checking that box. They are learning all that they can about the FC2 female condom, so congratulations. The second step, it's a good piece of advice to all providers to not wait for the client or the patient to bring up FC2 female condom because chances are he or she, they don't know much about it or they know, only know a little bit and they don't wanna bring it up, maybe they're embarrassed. So if the provider feels through her conversation with her client that the FC2 would be a good method, a good tool for this person, it is the provider's responsibility to bring it up. Hey, have you heard of this? If so, what have you heard about it? What do you know about the female condom? What would you like to know about the female condom? and have a dialogue with the client about what it is, what the benefits are. And at this point, you already know because you have the facts. Another opportunity that is great for both the provider and the client is to ask, what are, what are the client's reservations about it? What are their concerns? And most of the concerns we find that patients talk about are easily um, solved with with, communicate, with uh, education about the FC2 female condom. Maybe they've heard that it makes noise, um, and it doesn't. That was the first generation polyurethane that made a little squeaking sound. The nitrile, the second generation FC2, does not. Or maybe they've heard it's hard to insert. Well, the provider does a demo of the FC2 female condom using a demonstration model, and then has the client also do a demo, and it builds her capacity so that now she feels, oh yeah, that's not so hard to do. So it's really important to find out what are the client's reservations. Now, of course, some of those reservations, the provider may have little to no control over um, as to why the, the patient doesn't want to try female condom. But chances are her reservations or his reservations are things that are met with education. A huge factor in the success of FC2 female condom and that client taking the condom home and trying it and using it correctly and having a good experience and therefore wanting to use it again. A huge factor that contributes to that success is communication between a provider, that's you, and your client. And when I say communication, I mean two-way communication. So the provider and the client are both talking about the pros and cons, the benefits, the fears, the worries, uh, the advantages of the FC2 female condom. So when the client leaves the room, she feels she's been heard, she's gained knowledge, and she has some tools to use this FC2 female condom to protect herself. Some barriers to effective communication that I want to discuss with you today. The first one is negative body language, and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you're looking down, or you're looking angry, or maybe your arms are crossed across your chest, the message to the client is that you're not open to giving this message, and therefore the client is not going to be open to receiving the message. Another barrier to effective communication is your tone of voice. Keep it gentle, keep it kind, Try not to be loud or um, go too fast. Keep a tone that you would want someone to use with you and the client will be more open to hearing the message. Another barrier to effective communication is using terms that are too technical uh, or medical jargon that to you in your world makes perfectly good sense, but to your client, it doesn't. So pause and ask the client, to repeat back to you what they heard you say and check in and make sure that what you're communicating 
is what the client is receiving. And that's a way that you can check yourself and make sure that you're using language that can easily be received by that client. You have a lot to cover. We're completely sensitive to the fact that you have a small amount of time to spend with clients, but use the time wisely. Provide information, but maybe not too much, or pause every once in a while, and again, make sure you ask the client to repeat the information back to make sure it's been being received. Ask him or her if they have any questions. Maybe the direction you're going with the information is not the direction that the client needs right now. These are four barriers of effective communication that I've mentioned. There are more, and the best way to keep yourself in check and set yourself up for success is to check in with the client and make sure the message you're delivering is the one that's being heard and received. So what are some skills or factors that can contribute to effective communication with your client? And I will name a few here. Try to be genuine and welcoming. Chances are the person sitting in front of you feels vulnerable already. Perhaps they've just had a positive STI test result. Um, perhaps they're with a new partner. Perhaps it's the first time they've ever talked with anyone about sex. And that person is you. So keep it genuine and welcoming so that the dialogue, the two-way communication can continue. Another way to be an effective communicator is to pause and listen. Ask questions, ask open-ended questions so the, the client can tell you uh, where he or she is, what are they thinking, what are their questions, what are their concerns. And I know that you're busy in your position, but stop and pause and listen. Another uh, strategy for effective communication is to be tolerant and to really open yourself up to keeping your own values, attitudes, and beliefs in check and really be client-centered and be there for that client at that point, a very vulnerable time for them. So be tolerant. The last one that I'll put an exclamation point behind is be patient. Behavioral change is slow. You know that. In your own life, you've had a behavior that you wanted to change and didn't happen overnight, did it? Be patient. Behavioral change takes a while. Stay with that client. You might be the only one who's staying with them. Be patient. Judy and Simone make valid points about how our attitudes and values, and sometimes even our prejudices, can get in the way of making the FC2 a success in our communities and programs. In this episode, we have learned of many ways that we can reinforce positive values and messages to communicate about the FC2 and ensure that users have all the knowledge they need to use the FC2 to protect themselves from HIV, STIs and unplanned pregnancies. In the next episode, we get a masterclass on behavior change from one of the world's foremost thinkers on behavioral and neuroscience and its impact on behavior change. We will also learn how we can apply some of these lessons in practical ways. I look forward to welcoming you to episode 7. I am Butle Mabaso and thank you for watching. The FC2 is available in these countries across the globe. For more information and to learn more about how we can support you, visit fc2femalecondom.com.